What's up, gang? Joe at Momentum Works. Today, we're going to be talking about turbine housings. We're going to be talking about AR, and we're also going to do a debate on waste gated versus non waste gated. Stay tuned. So, right off, if you're wondering, we're going to talk about AR. What is AR? It's area divided by radius, and it's how turbine housings are sized. They can also be sized in CM squared. But majority of housings that you're going to see today are in AR. You'll see A slash R, and then you'll see a number like 1.32, 1.45, 1.65. Now, what exactly that means is the area divided by the radius. I know that sounds kind of funny. It sounds like a mathematical term. The area refers to the area inside the tongue of the turbine housing. You're going to take that area number, and then the radius is the center of the turbine wheel down to that point in the tongue. Now, you don't really have to get tripped up on the math here. I kind of just want to tell you this so you know where it's coming from. More importantly, you want to focus on the numbers themselves, which are ratios. What we have here are two T6 divided exhaust housings for S400 and S410 turbos. On the left is a 115 or a 1.15. On the right is a 145 or a 1.45. You can see right off the bat, look at the difference in these housings. Look how much more girth this has. Now, mind you, these are both for the same turbo with the same turbine wheel, but you can see right off the bat that the 115 is much smaller than the 145. We'll do a quick walk around here so you can kind of get a look all the way around. But like I said, you can really see the difference and notice the difference between these two turbo housings. So now that we've seen the physical differences, now you might be asking yourself, from a performance standpoint, what makes these different? Well, obviously, the 115 is going to spool up much faster than the 145 because of the fact that it's a tighter housing. So think about like a hose. The further you put your thumb over the hose, the more pressure it builds. That's all a smaller exhaust housing does. It generates more pressure at the exhaust manifold to give you more boost pressure. So then you might say, hey, Joe, I just always want a small exhaust housing because I want instant boost. But the problem is, is this becomes a restriction. So when you get into the upper RPMs, that tight exhaust housing is going to create a bunch of back pressure and it's going to rob you of horsepower and, you know, drive your EGTs through the roof. So then you say, hey, I just want a huge housing so I can make all the boost because the larger housing has more room for more exhaust gas to flow. But the problem is, is that now you have that same hose with no thumb over it. So you're not getting that pressure. So when you're in the upper RPMs and you have a ton of exhaust volume, you're making power. But on the low end with those large exhaust housings, the turbo is not spooling because the exhaust gas that's in that housing, there's not enough to drive that wheel to make boost pressure. So that's why it's very important to find a ratio that works best for you. I love drawing parallels because it makes you know things easier for me to understand and I hope it does the same for you. Think about a rear differential. Think about 411 gears versus like a set of 333 gears. The 411s are much taller. Um, I'm sorry, the 411s are much smaller, but they're gonna make the truck accelerate faster. Whereas something in the threes, they would be taller gears and the truck will accelerate slower, but will end up going faster in the long run. It's the same thing with turbos. Those smaller housings, like a tall, like a high set of gears, like 411, it's gonna make the turbo spool up right away and go. But then you're gonna run out of power, just like you would with that rear. Same thing goes for the larger housing. If you get that large housing, like a set of tall gears or a set of tall tires, on the bottom end, it's going to be a real dog. You're not going to have any power, but up top, you'll make a ton of power. So now that we know about what these different housings do and how the ratios work, I have a new curveball for you. These are both 145 AR housings, and you can see that they look very different. On the left is a 145 for a 96 millimeter turbine wheel, and on the right, we have an S500 housing, which would work with the S500 turbine wheel, which I believe is a 117. Don't quote me, but it's much larger. Look at the difference. This one's missing a bunch of material. It's still huge. So these 145s are very different because of the fact that when you look inside, where we're getting that radius measurement is going to change quite a bit between these two housings. Because you got to remember, radius is the center of the turbine wheel to that point in the tongue of the turbo radius to the tongue. So that is different. And the actual diameter of the tongue is going to be different as well. Look at the difference in girth between these housings. So while these are both 145s, this 145 flows much more because it's used with a larger turbine wheel. We get this question a lot when customers buy S500s and we recommend a 115 and they say, hey, the 115 is way too small. For an S400, that would be the case. But for an S500, the 115 is much larger than you would think. 
There's one more aspect of turbine housings that we really should touch on before we move forward. Wastegated versus non-wastegated. So what you see here, a lot of people would call this the wastegate. This is just the wastegate actuator. So on this specific turbo, this is powered by air. It's a pneumatic actuator. So air comes through this nipple and will actuate this arm, which actually inside actuates the actuator. It's a lot of words, actuate, act I sound like a smart guy, but I'm not, I'm pretty dumb. Anyway, so this is a wastegated turbo. That's what it does. When you reach a certain boost pressure, this actuator moves a little trap door inside the turbo, which will allow the exhaust gas to bypass the, the turbine wheel. So instead of spooling up the turbine wheel, it goes through a trap door and just goes right out your exhaust pipe. Whereas a non-wastegated housing, that's here to party. It sends all the exhaust gas over that turbine wheel and you're gonna make all the boost. So why would you want a wastegate versus non-wastegate? Well, if you have an application where you wanna regulate boost with certain boost pressure, the wastegate makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, Caterpillar did this a lot because they would do a very small housing which would spool up very quick, but then they would need that wastegate on there, otherwise you'd run the risk of over spooling the turbo and snapping the shaft. Whereas when you're buying a turbo for your application, and it's very specific to what your performance and horsepower goals are, you can go with a non-wastegated housing because you know what your target boost pressure is gonna be and how the truck's gonna run. So a lot of guys think that the uh, wastegated turbos make the turbo spool up faster. That only happens if it's a smaller housing. Housing for housing, wastegated or non-wastegated, if they're the same AR, the same size, same turbine wheel, they're gonna spool up exactly the same. The only difference is that when you reach a set boost pressure, this wastegated option will open up and boost will either plateau or drop, whereas with a non-wastegated, it'll continue to climb or eventually it'll get to where its peak is based on drive pressures, and then it'll remain the same as well. Here, here's a little bit of sneaky extra footage. We're going to give this turbo a colonoscopy. Let's go in here. Let's see if we can get a more light. See that thing? It's like the size of like a quarter or a half dollar. Sorry, it's kind of dark in here. It's round. That's actually the actuator door inside the turbine housing. And basically when that pneumatic actuator moves, that little trap door in there will open up so that the exhaust gases, instead of coming through the volute and spinning the turbine wheel in the center here, instead of spinning that wheel, it's just gonna come right through here and go right out your exhaust system. That's what the wastegate does. So if at this point we're unclear on anything, there's two key takeaways. Small housing, turbo spool fast. Big housing, turbo spool slow. Small housing, turbo become restriction at high RPM. Big housing, flow very good at high RPM. And now, I know there's a lot more to it, but that's really what you really need to know when you're looking at ratios. For your specific application, and guys, you know here we do big trucks, our applications are gonna be different than if you're doing like a 2.0 liter, liter turbo, like a, an Evo or something, or a 2.5 on a Subaru. Your ARs are gonna be different. So it's always best to kind of just chat with somebody that works in your specific niche market. I can tell you right off the bat, if you've got a stock 14.6 liter Caterpillar, a 1.32 AR is gonna be a great setup. But if you had, a, you know, like I said, if you came to me and said, hey, I got an Evo, I'm making 600 horsepower, I'm not going to recommend a 1.32. It might be a 0.88. I don't know. I don't work in that market any longer. So it's very important to know exactly what you're doing. There's a lot of guys that can probably dictate what AR based on horsepower and things like that. That's great. But this information's out there, guys. The ARs are going to work best for your application, or at least a range is out there on the internet, or there's someone that knows that probably happy to give you the information. So do your research, things like that. This video is kind of just to explain the general background of what the AR is, how it's measured, and how it's going to affect your turbo and as far as how it's going to perform on your vehicle. So like I said, small housing, spool up fast. Big housing spool up slow, but the bigger housings are going to support big power. Now, the thing is, you might get a housing that's so large that you never even get to that power point, uh, the point of power or peak. So you might get a real small housing that spools up fast and it's still large enough to spool, you know, to not become a restriction on the top end. And that's the ideal scenario. Guys, I hope you like this video. I'm going to do a couple more on AR with some demonstrations like a fire hose versus a pressure washer because, you know, fire hose and a garden hose. And, you know, we'll talk about volume and things like that. This really kind of just talked about boost pressure, but there's really so many more dimensions to turbochargers and how to pick what's going to work best for your application. A lot of guys just want to know how much PSI it's going to build, but they don't think about the CFMs, the actual volume of the turbo moving. Think about a small TDO4 from a turbo or from a Subaru 
making 20 pounds versus an S500 making 20 pounds. Do you think that's the same amount of power? Absolutely not. Well, hey, I rambled on long enough and I gave you some insight into what we're going to do in some future videos on AR and turbine sizing and housing, yada, yada, yada. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, leave them below. If you have any specific questions about turbos, shoot us an email so that we get them and we can help you out. Thanks for watching. See ya. There's a dog in the warehouse. Hey, I need you guys to do something dumb to put into the end of the video. Can you, uh, what the fuck?